Swedish armored vehicles have always been unique and different. There's no arguing that. These differences often go beyond their looks. One such vehicle which will likely catch your eye is the Stridswagen 74, or SCRV 74 for short. It has an interesting story behind it, one I'll be telling you about in today's video. So let's go back to the end of World War II. If you guys remember my video on the Kronwagen, you might remember how desperate Sweden was. Sweden needed tanks and they needed them fast. Because the tank they currently had was such as the SCRV M42. Now, it's often said that the SCRV M42 was bad and outdated. But is that really the case? Ok yes it is, but let's take a look then. The SCRV M42 evolved from the old Lago tank. The first mention of what would become the SCRV M42 can be traced back to early 1941. One point of discussion was already its gun. There were multiple options such as a high velocity 5.7cm gun or a 10.5cm howitzer. But as some of you already might know, a new 7.5cm gun was chosen. This was the short barreled 7.5cm M41 gun L31. Now back when they were in 1941, this gun would have been fine. But production of the vehicle started two years later in April of 1943. And around this time it became painfully clear that this gun was just not going to do it anymore. So as early as 1944, rearming projects for the SCRV M42 began. There were multiple ideas going around on how to upgrade the vehicle. One of which was to lengthen the 75mm gun and another idea was to remove the 75mm gun altogether and replace it with a new gun. This gun would have been the 5.7cm PVKN M43 anti-tank gun. It was decided to develop an entirely new turret which would be able to mount a high velocity 7.5cm gun. This turret was designated the La Torn, which translates to divided turret. This name was given because it featured a 3 round magazine for an automatic rammer and this sort of auto loading mechanism would split the turret into two parts. The mechanism allowed the 7.5cm PVKAN M43 anti tank gun to fire 3 rounds in short bursts. The gun was also mounted far back in the turret and this was done to reduce the length of the barrel. After a mock up turret a fully functional prototype was created but was cancelled in 1946 after tests showed that the vehicle performed badly. However. This was not the last time the idea of upgrading the SCRV M42 was done. In 1954, Swedish designers and engineers returned once again to the SCRV M42. Sweden had pushed some Centurion Mark III tanks around this time, redesignated to SCRV 81s. But this was not enough to form a proper army, so another way of reaching that goal was by upgunning the SCRV M42. This project, however, is a bit complicated, so I'll try to explain it. There were a lot of options to choose from. Option A was to replace the turret of the SCRV M42, and there were three possible ways of doing this. Option A1 was to make a new turret of conventional type. Option A2 was to use the turret of the French AMX 13, and this would give it an oscillating turret with an autoloader. Option A3 was to make a turret similar to the divided turret we talked about earlier, and that's all we got for option A. Option B was simply to rebuild the tank into the tank destroyer variant, the PVKV M43. This tank was already in service with the army. Option A was chosen and out of all the three ways of doing it, option A1 was preferred the most. Option A2 was seriously discussed, but further inspection led to a lot of problems being found. Though the AMX-13 turret would provide solid firepower with only a slight weight increase, it would lose a lot of the gun depression, which was a feature the Swedes would rather have. Another reason for its cancellation was the fact that the turret ring of the AMX-13 did not fit onto the hull of the SCRV M42. Option A3 was dismissed almost right out of the gate, likely to the complexity and high cost of the project. The A1 plan was the cheapest solution and with it the tank would still maintain the minus 15 degrees of gun depression. Now that they had an idea, they could begin to design. However, it's not that easy to just take a tank and place a completely different turret onto it. There are numerous things you need to take into consideration. One of these was the way the tank was built. Even the SCRV M42 was already built disproportionately tall compared to its width. This was done for it to be able to be transported via railroads at the cost of it having quite a small turret ring. And this small turret ring was of course a bit tricky to work with, but in 1954 the first blueprints were completed. The turret was heavily sloped on all sides, it was bigger and had better crew conditions. The new turret housed the new LVKAN M36 75mm L60 anti-aircraft gun. This gun was the cheapest one, only requiring minor changes to the barrel length and a new recoil system to work with the new turret. Ammunition for it was already developed during and after World War II. 
The AP and APDS rounds were close to equal with the ones used by the main gun on the AMX-13. And as I said, the turret kept its minus 15 degrees of gun depression. And another way to cut down the cost was the fact that a lot of components from the Centurion tank were used. A SCR V74 only cost about a third as much of a new Centurion tank. The vehicle was also getting heavier, it approached 26 tons. Therefore it required a new, more powerful engine. The one chosen was a pairing of Scania Vibis 607 gasoline engine, which had a power output of roughly 340 horsepower. More tweaks to it allowed the engine to operate in temperatures as low as minus 25 degrees Celsius. Now that's cool. The top speeds on road were 28 miles per hour or 45 kilometers per hour. More improvements were made to the hull to support the extra weight. It was expected that the weight increase was roughly 1.5 tons. Turns out it was a miscalculation and the weight increase ended up being 2 tons higher. Because of that, the front of the hull was reinforced alongside the shock absorbers and the steering mechanism was changed. Furthermore, the tracks were widened, this reduced the ground pressure by roughly 25% and it also greatly improved with the mobility. The hull mounted machine gun was removed to make more room for ammunition. The driver's hatch also received new periscopes, but due to the new turret hanging over the hatch, the driver had a bit of a harder time getting in or out the vehicle. The armor of the SCR V74 is actually thinner than that of the SCR V M42. The armor had to be kept at 20 to 30 mm to avoid the suspension breaking down because of the weight increase. The L armor remained at 55 mm, the mandlet was roughly 20 mm thick and it also housed a coaxial machine gun. Another machine gun was mounted on the turret roof. It also featured three communication systems, one for internal communication, one for communication with the battalion and one for communication with the infantry. Later modifications include a spare road wheel on the turret, smoke dischargers and a turret basket. The crew consists of four men, a driver at the front located in the driving compartment and the rest of the crew resides in the fighting compartment in the middle. The rest of the crew being a loader, commander and gunner. Now that the design is complete, production of the SCR V74 could begin. The first prototype had a wooden mock-up turret and in 1957 it would receive a fully functional turret, note the fancy muscle brake which is only used on this specific prototype. After some trials and tests, the vehicle was accepted for production. 225 vehicles were ordered and the conversion was to be taken care of by two companies, good old Landswerk and Hexlunds and Sonar. Two variants would be produced, the H variant and the V variant. The H variant was based on the SCR V M42 TH and the V variant on the SCR V M42 TV. The difference between these models are minimal, the most noticeable one being the gearboxes. The 225 units produced would never see combat during the Cold War. The tanks were dispersed among four armored brigades, each receiving 48 tanks. At first they were used to support the British Centurion tanks in Swedish service, but over time the Swedes purchased more Centurion tanks which led to the SCR V74 being relegated to more reconnaissance style and other secondary roles. The true successor to the SCR V74 was the IKV-91, which was superior in basically every way. The remaining SCR V74s were kept in storage as reserves until they were retired from service in 1984. The chassis on which the turret were mounted were a good 41 years old by that point in time. A cool thing of note is that not all the vehicles served as range targets. There are actually some surviving vehicles on display. Most of them are in Sweden, but there's also one somehow in the Kubinka Tank Museum. I have zero clue how it ended up in there, but it, it just is. Interestingly, one of the SCRV M42s they have in the Arsenalen Tank Museum in Sweden is actually a rebuilt SCRV 74. All in all, the SCRV 74 is, in my opinion, a rather interesting vehicle. It shows that if provided enough effort, you can upgun a tank. However, on the battlefield of the Cold War, it would likely not have been very competitive. The reflection of many crew members about the vehicle is positive, though, with many stating that as soon as you get to know the vehicle, it functions properly. It's certainly a great display at a Swedish way of building tanks. Not following global trends, but designing a tank specifically for Sweden and its terrain. While it was largely outclassed, I believe it's still a cool and very fancy tank. A bit wacky for sure, but it has an intriguing story behind it, which I personally enjoy. Speaking of which, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe, like and share it. If you want to stay in the Swedish mood, check out my video about the Kranwagen. Or if you want more tank related stuff, why don't we take a look at the tanks and stuff playlist? I hope you will find something enjoyable in there. Anywho, thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one.